Howdy everybody, this is Bake with IronThroneCraft.com. Today we're going to go over the Continental Domination from June. And uh, this was Kingdom 1 against Kingdom 5 against Kingdom 9. So it was kind of a clash of the titans. Um, I'm going to go into a lot more depth in these Continental Domination videos than I have in the past because Continental Domination is one of the more exciting events and it's one of the more uh, that I've gotten a lot of questions about. So I'm going to actually go in and I'm going to go through everything that I'm doing and there's going to be, I'm going to, this is going to be in several parts. So this is just part one, and it's day one, and you saw what I just did is I went in and I changed my uh, guard captain, because my guard captain was still set to single type, and so I switched it over to Majestic, what I did right there, because uh, I found that to be better in uh, Continental Domination than single type. A lot of people still run single type. For instance, if you are a single type trap, and you've got majority T7, T6, high tier troops of that type, and that's your only good type of gear, you probably still want that to be on your guard captain, because as you'll see... Uh, not so much in this video, but in later videos, whenever we get into the big knockdown, drag out fights, rallying really becomes a part of it, becomes very important. We lose some tiles because we're not uh, filling rallies, or because our AC is getting rallied down faster than we can rally theirs down. So Continental Level Nation is actually one of those events where you really need people. And, I mean, you need big accounts too, but you need people. And you need people that will fill the AC, that will fill your rallies, that will help on sanctuaries. Because troop count goes a lot into it. So if you're a smaller account that is set up like a single type trap, and that's your only gear, that's good. You should still run that in Continental Domination. And we have a lot of people that do extremely well with that setup in Continental Domination. Uh, you want some other type troops as well in there. But for the most part, whatever your strongest gear is, that's what you want to send into Continental Domination. So as you can see, this is day one. We've still got uh, everybody all over the place. Uh, most alliances are still in. Right off the bat, we went for absorbs this time because, uh, as we found out last time, if you watched my last Continental Domination video, you need those bodies. If you don't have enough bodies at the end, you're just going to get overwhelmed. And we got crushed last time because it was just a tidal wave of literally hundreds of people descending upon us. And we didn't have the people to fight it off. Uh, even though we have big accounts, we have big good gear, everything like that. There were so many people coming at us last time that we couldn't fight it off. So we changed our strategy up again, and we went for the absorbs right off the start. And so as you can see, I've got troops queued in number 46. That's why I've got that little green face right there. And uh, what I do is I join, and I just hit auto-select, and then I go in and I send the actual troops that I want. So you see now I'm going into 46, 16 out of 20. This is only a 10-person tile, so I know that means that it's going to be 10 versus 10. And... I'm just going to go in there with uh, 10 versus 10 means you only can you can only take 500k troops in, which is a very small amount. So usually I'll go in there with a single type. Uh, a lot of times I'll set it to 200k of each of two tri one you know two types and then 100k siege. That way I can take the uh, alliance city down faster. It all depends on who we're playing, and if I think it's going to be a burnout game or if it's going to be an AC game. And you'll see that in chat a lot. You'll see people saying. You know, get on the AC, fill the rally, blah, 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 blah. So you see the 10v10 map is really small. There's only one sanctuary right in the middle. And what I always do right off the bat is I go in and I hit the uh, biggest person right at the start. So I only came in, came in with uh, infantry troops. That guy ports away before I even have a chance to do anything. And so you're just going to see me sending infantry at people using both of my infantry heroes. And uh, you see how I pulled one off there? And that's because that way I can send two marches. So even though I've got one, only one type troop, I want to be able to send two marches out. And so I'm emptying my base out entirely, which is dangerous. Because if anybody cut, catches on to that, they can backdoor me and they can burn me pretty easily. But uh, it, it is what it is. So you see that I'm uh, waiting for my troops to come home. And then I'm going through and I'm selecting my uh, infantry troops. And I'm just uh, basically knocking people out one at a time. And... That's that's the basically what I do for the first two minutes of every single game because the AC has a bubble on it until 13 minutes. So even if you only want to focus on the objectives, you're still going to have to just kind of dick around for the first two minutes of the game until it gets down to 13 minutes. So a lot of time what I'm doing there is I'm finding out if I can bit burn their biggest person. And if I can, then sometimes I'll try to burn them out in that first two minutes. That way it takes out the biggest competition that I've got in the AC. Um, or I'm just focusing on sanctuaries. Or, as you can see, I'm just going through and taking out their fillers. So that's what I'm doing here, is I'm porting around, I'm hitting their biggest people. And I'm making sure that uh, everybody's burnable to me, everything else like that. So these 10v10 battles can be very boring, or they can be like basically one of the most exciting kinds of the fight. When it's 10v10, when you've got a huge player going up against a huge player, or multiple huge players on each team, 
and you actually have to rally because everybody has such a small troop count that you're going to have to set these rallies well and you're going to have to do really well with the rallies. So that's the big focus for continental domination is people need to realize what it is that wins you these games and it's taking out the alliance city. It's not you can burn people out, but a lot of times it's really hard to burn everybody out on the other team. Even if you can burn all of them, sometimes it just takes too long. You're also going to use a ton of march speeds and everything else like that. Um, one of the big aspects of Continental Domination is making sure that you get your team in and out as quickly as possible in these battles if you've got the battle won. Uh, the other aspect of that is if you've got the battle lost, you want to get in and out as quickly as possible. That way you can go to the next tile and get it done. So you see, that's why I'm using speeds here, even though it's pretty much over and done with, because I want to get out of this tile, that way I can get into the next fight. And you'll see that that's uh, what's kind of hard. A lot of times there's this event where you, if you finish 10 battles, then you get the event rewards, everything else like that. We actually went through and provided gold rewards from our vault for everybody that got into 10 battles. And so all I did is I poured it over to the AC, even though I could have gone through and burned each one of those people out and uh, gotten some points. Instead of doing that, I went, I took the AC out, I, we absorbed the alliance, so we got more people fighting for us now. And as you can see, the map is getting a little bit more solidified. That's FAM up to the north from Kingdom 1 that's yellow. That's PSY down to the southeast that's green. And you'll get familiar with those colors uh, moving forward. So what I'm doing now is I'm watching this FAM tile because it's, it's about to become available to declare on. So I declare a war on that. I'm going to cut it a little bit so you don't have to sit there. I auto-join with my 1 million infantry. And then what you'll see here is after I cut this a little bit, you'll see me go back in and reset my troops so that it's not just 1 million infantry. I don't want to go in there single type in a 20v20 20 20 20 tile. So there's the cut. You'll see me go in and reset my troops now to what I actually want to bring into this fight. Because when I auto-select troops, that doesn't mean that I just want to go in there with infantry. I want to go in there with a the split a lot of the time. That way I can use all three of my heroes, but I want to grab that spot in the tile. So what I'm doing now is I'm going through and I'm putting 250,000 of each type in there. And what that does is it gives me the ability to send out three strong marches, you know, obviously infantry, archers, and cav. And then I've also got 250k siege, and the siege do extremely well against alliance cities because your damage done is based off of your troop capacity. Siege obviously has the highest troop capacity. If you look up in the top left, you saw that red arrow I put up there. I'm unboosted. So you don't want to do that either, especially when you're going up against a big, big alliance like FAM. You want to make sure you got your boost running. And you see they've only got eight players, but... Bran is the biggest player on their team, and we know that Bran is a beast from you know, playing with him for quite a while. So I ignore Bran. I don't do my strategy of go hit the strongest guy first. I go over and I'm trying to take out his fillers, because basically we've got 20, they've got 8. What I found out last time, what everybody found out last time, is it doesn't really matter how many people you have. I'm sorry, it doesn't really matter how your power is if you are completely outnumbered, because you can just get swarmed down. And so you see this fella right here, Rockray, is messing with the uh, sanctuaries. And I don't want him to be messing with the sanctuaries. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to port over there and I'm going to start burning him, basically saying, hey, leave the sanctuary alone. Um, and that is very important when you're going up against really, really large accounts because on those really large accounts, they've also got really large sets of Dark Lord a lot of the time or just really large sets of gear on their uh, guard captain. And if they've got really good gear on their guard captain, that 1,000% attack boost is massive. It makes a huge difference in their defense ability and in their offense ability. So now I see Bran over here attacking people, and I'm going to go backdoor him. And you're going to see that I don't uh, speed, and so he eats my marches like tacos. Like, uh, I hit Bran, and this was actually a very embarrassing moment for me, because I hit him three times, and I say, uh, no, Bran won't burn. And then you'll see Mr. Dizzle here poured in next to him, march on him. You see huge defeat on all of my attacks. I only killed 5k, he killed 25k. Terrible hits. And I say, yeah, Bran won't burn and call. And then Dizzle hits him and goes, now nah, Bran burns. So that made me feel like a dumb dumb. So, so you'll see me uh, change up my strategy here a little bit in just a second. Because Dizzle got him burning now, so I know that he can burn. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and attack. And what I'm doing here is this is my uh, majestic hero is the main hero. And that's why I wasn't burning him the first time around. So because I've got majestic running as my primary uh, hero set right there with archers as my deputy, what I do is I fill all my troops in there, and I send those with that Majestic, and it actually gets enough kills in order to get the burn, and so you're going to see me do that several more times. And like I said, a lot of times, even though I can attack the AC right now, 
I know that Bran has the research and the uh, gear to do damage to our AC, even if I'm reinforcing it. A lot of times, if there's not somebody that's uh, big enough to get that damage through, if, he, if Bran were to be setting rallies on the AC, he would be doing damage to it every single time, even if we have it fully reinforced, even if I've got my hero in there, uh, if he's assuming his rallies fill. So that's why I'm taking Bran out right now, because he did burn. He's burning me back, but we've got multiple people hitting him and burning him. And I want to make sure that Bran is out of there, because basically he is my biggest threat in this game, because they've only got eight players, and one of them is Bran. So you see, we kind of swarm him. We're saying that on call, which is just knock Bran out, send all your troops. He won't have time to burn us out. Once we get Bran down, we're going to go over to the AC. And you see a uh, smart player there reinforces me. That way he just stops uh, burning me as I'm marching on him. So now Bran's out. I see Alvarek over there. You see they've done 2% damage to our uh, AC right there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour it over to theirs now because it'll take less time to burn their AC out now that Bran's gone than it will for me to actually uh, burn everybody else out and for all the rest of us to burn everybody else out. So you see they're still messing with the sanctuaries, which is important. But see how much I just hit that AC for? That's because I've got Siege. And if you see right up here, I'm looking at my AC HP. It's at 98%. If I see that start dropping... What I'm going to do is I'm going to send a march to reinforce my AC from the other side of the map. Where I'm sitting right here, I'll send like my archer heroes and a bunch of archers and stick them in my AC. That way it uh, slows down the burn rate on our AC. But uh, I think once Bran went out, they kind of gave up on this tile. So I'm just max marching on it every single time, hitting it for quite a bit because I do have those 250,000 siege. And we're going to take the AC out pretty quickly. But you'll see this in the 20v20 tiles and the 10v10 tiles. And you really need to focus on the AC. Even if you have a really, really big person on the other team and you're not as big, they're going to be focusing on your AC as well. So you can try to backdoor them. You can reinforce the AC, which is incredibly important. Most people know that at this point, as you'll see in my next video, whenever I can't get in to reinforce an AC because everybody was so good about reinforcing the AC. Um, and I actually went a little bit bonkers over that. So that was just the beginning of round one. Like I said, there's going to be a lot of these Continental Domination videos going out. Did a lot of battling. It was a lot of fun. Good job to uh, Kingdom 1 and Kingdom 5 and Kingdom 9. That was a great fight. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Expect another video tomorrow.